Today we're going to see how I keep my tanks from overheating in the summer. I've got a few tips for you if you're struggling to keep your tank temperature down and then we'll finish off the video by installing some cooling fans on the nano tank. Let's go. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is go through a few tips of things that you can do to, uh, to try and reduce the temperature of your tank. And the first one is something that I do anyway, because I like a lot of surface agitation. So if you look at my power heads, they are pointed slightly, slightly up. And same with my gyre. My gyre points up and causes a lot of surface, surface agitation. Uh, the reason why I do this pretty much 24-7 uh, throughout the year is for my pH as well uh, because it, it promotes good gas exchange as well as um, creating the surface agitation and when you've got surface agitation you've got more water being evaporated and the more water you evaporate the cooler your tank is it's thermal transfer or something I'm not going to pretend I know the full physics behind it but it works so yes first tip is to point your power heads up towards more towards the surface not directly to the surface uh, but more towards the surface to create this surface agitation. The second thing you can do is open your cabinet doors. Obviously, if you've got small kids, um, small children, I probably wouldn't recommend opening your cabinet doors and leaving them all day. But as a parent, you know that. I don't have kids. Um, so yeah, I keep my cabinet doors open 24-7, as you can see. Uh, the main reason is gas exchange. I found when I, I removed the cabinet doors, um, I had a slightly higher pH. So that's why I kept them off, but it also helps in the summer. I mean, if you think you've got equipment within this um, cabinet, a lot of people, they keep their um, controllers in, there, in the cabinet. Uh, anything that uses electricity does emit a little bit of heat. And if you've got that heat building up within that cabinet, um, it can affect the tank temperature. So opening those cabinet doors will let the heat escape and um, it should bring your tank down, tank temperature down a little bit. It certainly won't make a vast difference but if you couple it with, say, the, the surface agitation, it might get you out of a sticky situation. Um, so yeah, that's one other thing that you can do. Another thing you can do is uh, use ice. I wouldn't re recommend putting ice directly into your sump. I've seen people do it, and I definitely wouldn't recommend putting ice directly into the sump. It can affect your salinity. Um, if, you use it, if you're not using RO water and you're putting ice directly into the sump, that's a really bad idea. Um, if you get yourself a bottle, an old Coke bottle, I mean, I use this as an, ex as a, as an example. Um, if you were to fill this up with water, uh, put it in the freezer. I'd fill it up with RO water. If you were to put it in the freezer, let it freeze. If you were to dump that in the, um, in the sump, it's obviously going to uh, melt, cool the tank down, um, and it's not going to let any of this water go into the sump. I would fill it up with RO water, mainly just the fact that if this does break, if it does leak, then you've got RO water going into your sump and you don't have tap water going into your sump. That is the last thing that you want. Um, if you were to have a few of these, maybe four of these, put them all in the freezer. When one is defrosted, you could go back to the freezer, put this one that's defrosted back in the freezer, grab one out that's frozen and put it back in the sump and you've got, say, a day's supply of, um, of ice that you can go in the, uh, in the sump. Uh, so that's another tip that you can do. I'll put that back down there. Um, another one is, if you've got a desk fan, pop it on a chair or however, you, if you've got one of those stand-up fans, it's great. But if you were to point this into the sump, like this, this would also cool your tank down. This would do a great job. You could leave it on when you go to work um, and just have that running and cooling the tank down on a hot day. These aren't long-term solutions. Obviously, you don't want a fan sat on a chair in front of your sump forever. The main method I use is actual aquarium fans. So I have these pointing towards the water surface. And when it gets too hot, they come on. Uh, it's early morning at the minute. It's not too hot outside, but they will come on at some point today. Um, I've got the GHL ones, GHL fans. This is more sort of a, a high-end fan. The build quality is cracking. They're um, I don't know if they're made of aluminium, but they're um, powder coated something. And uh, I mean, the construction of them is, is much better than something like this. This is a Boyu fan, and to be honest, if you're going to buy a cheap fan, I would recommend this. Um, there's a brand in the UK called D&D, &D, 
uh, and they also sell these fans. This is an unbranded one. This is just a Chinese import with the standard name Boyu. You can get these from eBay and they are literally half the cost of the D&D fans and they are actually the same fan. Uh, this is the four fan model. I think I paid 20 pounds for this. And if you go on say Charterhouse Aquatics and buy the D&D fan, you're looking at more 35, 40 pound. Um, so yeah, top tip, don't buy the full branded name. You can buy the, the Chinese one, which is the same fan, just unbranded, and it will do exactly the same job. To be honest, these fans are great. Other than being a bit loud, they're great. I mean, this one I've had for maybe two years, and it's still going. Um, it's a great little fan. These ones I've also had for 18 months. Also great, I mean, the benefit with these GHL fans, they're maybe three, four times the cost, but the level of noise they produce is, say, half of what this thing, this is loud. And I only upgraded to the GHL fan because my uh, girlfriend started working from home, and last summer, these fans were doing a head in. I switched over to these GHL fans, and then she didn't even know where they were on. Um, so yeah, happy wife, happy life. Um, so yeah, that's how I call this tank. What we'll probably do is switch over to the nano tank <clears throat> and we'll get this installed in the, nan in the nano tank. If you want them running properly, you'll need to run them on a temperature controller. Uh, I'm using a D&D temperature controller. So when my, my set temperature is 25.3, if it goes to 25, if it goes down to 25, the heater will come on until it hits 25.3. If it goes to 25.6, the cooling fans will come on um, and it will cool it down until it hits 25.3 again. This is the power bar for the temperature controller. The left hand side is the heater and the right hand side is the, uh, the socket for the fan. I've got that just set up there. That's wired up, comes up through, through the cabinet up to this point here. I'm probably gonna mount these on here somewhere, or maybe on the back, I'm not really sure how I'm gonna mount them, but I'll put this camera on a tripod and we'll get these mounted. So, the way they work is, let me see if I've got this in frame. Basically, you've got this U-clip here and a thumb screw, and it just, you tighten it to, uh, to fit on your glass thickness. So yeah, you just, you just tighten it up until it hits the the edge of the glass. So I'm actually going to mount these on this side here. So just literally clip it onto the edge of the glass, tighten up your thumb screws, make sure it's nice and tight. It's basically, you just want to give it a little tug, make sure that you can't knock these into the uh, into the tank because they are plugged in and they're plugged in at the back, like so. And then you want to point them. You don't. You don't want them at a right angle, so it's just blowing air straight across the tank. You want to point them down, so the airflow is actually hitting the the water surface and evaporating that water. Um, like I say, I've got a 10 liter ATO on this tank, and I top this tank up once per week. Now that the fans are on there, and if they if it's a hot day and they they are running, I will be using more auto top off water than normal. So I do have to keep an eye on the tank. Um, you can see in this tank there is a little bit of surface movement but I run the pumps quite low so there's not a lot of surface agitation on this tank um, so I can't really utilize that feature. Uh, the power head that I've got in there is pumps water out straight so I can't point that to, to the water surface so the cooling fans on this tank are the only method that I can use um, to keep this tank cool. Obviously I don't have a sump so I can't open the cabinet. This is it, this is all I've got so the fans will do great job at keeping this tank nice and cool. So I decided to move the fans. I really wasn't a big fan of not having this um, this jump guard off the tank. Uh, the last thing I want to do is lose these clowns. So I thought, you know what, I've seen other people mount their, their fans here. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to mount them there. They are way off centre, but to be honest, they point straight down anyway. So when you're looking straight at the tank, you don't really notice. Um, I've got just enough room to be able to lift out the skimmer cup 
and I've got just enough room on the other side to uh, to mount the ATO um, the ATO line. Uh, so yeah, it probably it's probably not going to be as effective as having them over the main bulk of the tank. Uh, but to be honest, this tank right here is right next to this window, and it doesn't overheat that much. Um, and if I really do start struggling one day and I do need to move them, I can just move them back over to this side and have it pushing over the full surface area of the, uh, the top of the tank. So yeah, I'm gonna go with, um, with them just here for now and uh, we'll see how we get on. I'll let you know how I get on with them, uh, but I have no doubt that they, uh, they will do a good job and they'll be able to keep up. So that'll do it. If you're enjoying the content, please do like, please do subscribe and have a cracking week, guys.